there, give me your, back to sort of the day-to-day -day management for an everyday patient. Uh, metastatic disease, frontline, whatever you gave them. When's that first scan? When do you think about maintenance? Does Ox versus Erie matter? Give me sort of your way of playing that initial part of the chess game. Perfect. Okay, so every month I always check a CEA. I scan every three months. And usually I'll give the first line for about four to six, usually about six. After six months, if everything is stable, I start maintenance. Erie or, so you opt to Erie? <laughs> so, um, all full Fox patients, no matter what, Got it, right? you have to. Yeah. I mean, or they're well, not going to be walking in. Because they can write their check for their copay. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So you have to. And then usually I'll do um, some sort of 5-FU. Majority of patients prefer Zalota with Avastin. The well, theory patients are a little unique because they're feeling fine at month six. Cruising along. They're cruising along, and they're like, why do you want to drop this? Mm -hmm. um, and so then it becomes this patient discussion about, okay, well... This is what our options are. We can make it a little bit easier. You don't have to be tied to the infusion center this often. You can come once every three weeks, enjoy your life, mm. work, do Sounds whatever. Good, yeah. And then we can always use this agent again if yeah. we need to. Do you talk about this in Frontline? I mean, right when you're starting, you say we're going to give it for a while yeah. and, and then think about this. But I actually, st I probably start maintenance a little sooner. In all fairness, I probably started about four months. What I would too. Frig what's so magic about 12 cycles? Exactly. I don't know. So I see it. It's like, I hear it it's, all the time, though. It's like it's a medical legal requirement in the metastatic well, it comes disease. From the setting. Setting. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It comes from the adjuvant setting where no one gets, should get 12 cycles. Right. It's not a mark, a badge. But when you do maintenance with full fury, the issue is what happens is after the induction, people look like me, and then they grow their hair back just in time to <laughs> reinstitute the drug. <laughs> But I do think a lot of our colleagues good think looks. that it's we a, expect them to give 12 cycles. I agree that there's with you. some sort oh, of obligation. Yeah. And is this common? I back? commonly hear that. Yeah. yeah. From and, the, yes. and that, that's a, that they, from the patient. they get a badge. Usually, usually the badge maximal tumor. Have? Yeah, they have 25. <laughs> the, you know, the sure. maximal tumor response. You get there, a 12 there cycle you go. badge I, I right there. So if you, uh, I'm, I'm a, so a rainbow you. coalition. But you know, the bottom line is if you look at most studies, 90% of the response occurs in the first four to six cycles. The rest is just adding toxicity. You mean the first three to four months? Three yes. to four right. months. Yeah, and that's Everybody in the Optimax that? study, I mean, suggested that, you know, after three months, you know, you plateau, your yeah. response plateaus. Totally. So, you know, three to four months is probably optimal. For some patients with full fear, you may extend it to six months, but optimizing is probably a good idea for all patients. Frontline Quality EGFR work. therapy, what's your maintenance? So, in all fairness, I don't do a lot of frontline EGFR don't therapy. Don't do much, don't do much. Don't do it. Don't do much, do do much. Keep the EGFR going, switch. I don't know. There's no, I don't know. There's yeah. Um, the Europeans are doing a lot of reintroduction. They're giving it and bringing it back. Usually later. I stop it yeah. and I just do the 5-FU. Okay. And if, if they're on BEV frontline, BEV's part of your maintenance? Yeah. Yes. Q3 week, Q2, do you keep them on Q2, go to Q3, seven, doesn't matter? Just depends if I'm doing IV 5-FU or if yeah. If you're doing IV 5-FU, it's Q2. If you're doing K, so, if you're doing uh, yeah, Q3. Every three weeks has become, say, even with infusion 5-FU, but my preference has been actually in the maintenance to shift to CAPE site. Dosing of the CAPE? Uh, metronomic. Continuous as in, dosing, yeah, as in the Cairo like, like in Cairo 3, uh, so uh, not two weeks on, one week off, shouldn't get much hand The other is the chemotherapy-free interval, yeah. although mm -hmm. it, it, it looks bad. It doesn't look bad in people with non-BRAF mutants, minimal disease that disappeared on induction therapy. I think some of those patients could be free and have a real vacation, not just a weekend be. at the Holiday Inn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, <laughs> for the opposite group, some patients are not good maintenance patients right. because you take them off the non-5-FU drug, and their vacation is a weekend. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's a big disappointment if right. you do it. So if people started with peritoneal disease, metastases, I'd stick with the drug, and that's a patient where you'd want to be on full fury. Yeah, correct. Switching to second line, biologic use in second line. What do you like? Uh, and let's, let's make them RAS mutated to start with. So I always... Asymptomatic progression. I tend to use BEV in the front line, so I continue the BEV second line. Okay. And they're used to it. They're on it. Anybody switching out? Anybody changing to the other VEGF inhibitors? Um, in those RAS wild type, is there a patient where you switch from VEGF to, to EGF? You know, that's uh, yes. Yeah. The answer is yes. So, uh, and, and most, mostly those patients who become symptomatic or the tumor load actually uh, goes uh, goes signal. I mean, if you look at the TML study, 
the TML study definitely shows that uh, you know, patients would benefit from continuation of bevacizumab. One thing is missing, the response rate is 4%. If you look at the uh, EGFR studies in the RAS wild type in the second line, the response rate is higher. Now, the survival and PFS are probably very similar, but you do get that additional response in the second line. Not as much in the first line. The difference in first line response rate is not there. But in second line, at least historically, seems to favor EGFR inhibitors for sure. Some patients, what I do is actually I start with Fulfiri, Bebesuzumab, and I just switch the, bi the yeah. biologic in the second line. Uh, and in those patients that are, have cruised along all the way through and they just have minimal increase in the disease, I actually stick with the VEGF inhibitor and just switch to chemotherapy. Well, this is part of what's got me hooked on this depth of response concept, is that, is that just as you say, apart from EGFR in the right patient, we don't really, even in second line, certainly in third, we don't see a lot of further responses from the therapies we have. No. No. Agreed? Response is not an, an indicator, just like with regorafenib or TAS-102. If you're looking for response, you'll be disappointed. Yep. You're maintaining. Right. Can I ask a question of my colleagues? Because this drives me nuts. Is that if one does Fulfox up front, why do we do Fulfiri when the patient just progressed on 5-FU? Because there's no interaction. Be, in, be, you need 5-FU with oxaliplatin, but you don't need 5-FU with arenotecan. As in the SWOG study, people went to arenotecan alone. Why do we keep people on pumps and exposing them to a, a toxic drug that didn't work or wasn't working? I, I have an answer for that. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm waiting. So I'll, I'll, uh, so I'll give you... He's yeah, irritated. I'm just wondering. I, I just... Uh, you know, I love you, Dad. But... <laughs> So there are two studies. One is an older study, you know, from the UK, FOCUS, which essentially started patients on 5-FU, then randomized patients to Fulfiri or IRI. The Fulfiri patients following 5-FU failures did better than the IRI. That's one. Two, actually from the pancreas cancer world, the study, the Napoli 1 study, where patients were actually randomized to 5-FU MM398, which is nanoliposomal irinotique, and 5-FU or M MM398. Actually, the combination of the two drugs so Naliri plus 5-FU did better than 5-FU, but also did better than single agent MM398. In fact, single agent MM398 did not do any better than 5-FU. In pancreatic which tells cancer. You, yes, right. but which tells you there's Second probably line. a level, yes, and they weren't exposed to 5-FU previously, so I give you all these caveats. But that tells you that there is some level of at least additivity, maybe not synergism, but at least additivity between the two. Uh, you know, so that, that would set the rationale for doing that. It, you know, 5-FU... But they had not progressed yeah. on 5-FU. Yeah. But, but the, we do in the focus beyond study, progression, right? We but do. in the focus study... Uh, no, I think it's no, actually no, no, laziness. It's <laughs> because the pump's in. <laughs> and, you just, and you just switch out I one drug. I throw in Levantis. So I'm going to... But, but I'm oh going to... No, I'm, I'll, tell I'm you, I'll tell you I what. I do not do that. So I'll tell you what. So uh, uh, I think it, it is not unreasonable to drop the infusion of 5-FU... But I would caution that if you do that, to keep the irinotecan at the every other week, the biweekly regimen, and not go to every three weeks, which is much more toxic. So that would be an acceptable. But I prefer to continue. The I do it with VEGF. I drop it with EGF. Because I oh, think yeah, the, okay. the BEV 5-FU, I do think there's a little magic there. There, there could be some magic. And I often will change my 5-FU. Um, just because I don't know, because because uh, I'm old enough to remember that we used to do that, huh. and sometimes it would work. Sure. And so if I was pump, I might go to pills or vice versa. But because I agree with you, I don't. I'm, it's five FU beyond progression without a lot of evidence.